Hi guys, do you have a CSTM-0120 final in 2 weeks, in 2 days, maybe in 24 hours? Well, this video is made specifically for you. In order to ace CSTM-0120, you need to know the following 300 plus topics. That's a lot of topics. But if studied efficiently, even less than 24 hours study could dramatically improve your results. I am going to focus on the top 10 most common topics that appear on Baruch CSTM-0120 finals. Everybody procrastinates, it's absolutely normal. That's why we prepared a special last minute cram course that will prepare you for your CSTM-0120 final within a super short period of time. You can access our last minute cram course by clicking the link in the video description below. Also, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and like our video. So let's do this. The first topic is factoring binomials. So we're gonna look at the problem one from final 019a. So here we need to uh, factor x squared minus nine, x squared minus 46 x, and identify which of the following is not a factor. So for the first one, we can clearly see that this is a difference of squares. Why? Because it looks like x squared minus three squared. And based on the formula, it's equal to x minus three times x plus three. Now, the second one is also difference, but it's not difference of squares. It's just a difference because 64x is not a perfect square. So here I can see that the common factor is x. If I factor that out, it's going to be x minus 64. So now I got four different factors and I have to eliminate, uh, eliminate them because we're looking for which one is not a factor. Eliminate them from the, from the five multiple choices. So x minus 64 is one of them. x is one of them x minus 3, x plus 3 are, are also one, also two of them. Therefore, the answer is D, x minus 8. The next topic is factoring the quadratic functions, ax squared plus bx plus c. We're going to look at problem 2 from the final F019a. So this problem is not exactly a quadratic equation by itself. So completely factor, and obviously Baruch College is trying to scare you by giving you x to the 6, and x to the 5th, and x to the 4th. What you need to figure out immediately is, it's a tri is it a trinomial or not? Trinomial means, do, does it have three terms or not? And it does have three terms. So, since it has three terms, and since this is CSTM0120, chances are, in 99% of cases, it is going to be a quadratic equation. So, how are you going to get this given x to the 6th, x to the 5th, x to the 4th? How are you going to create, turn this trinomial into a quadratic equation? Most importantly, take, take into consideration the highest x that goes into it. So x to the fourth, if you factor this out, you're going to be left with 315x squared plus 18x minus 9. Now, you could technically start with the quadratic formula right away, but look into 315, 18, and 9. 9 is clearly divisible by 9, 18 is divisible by 9, and 315 is also divisible by 9 because the sum of digits 3 plus 1 plus 5 is equal to 9, meaning that the whole number is also divisible by 9. That's one of the tricks you must know. So since all of these guys are divisible by 9, you just factor 9 out. So if you factor 9x to the 4th and do rough mathematical computation, you're going to get 35x squared plus 2x minus 1. It's imperative to factor 9 from each of, from each of the three terms within the brackets, right? So now, since you have this thing, now you're ready to move on to the quadratic equation. So you have A equals 35, B equals 2, C is equal to minus 1. And just plug that into the quadratic formula, minus B plus minus square root of B squared minus 4AC over 2A. You just have to do it properly. So minus B is minus 2 plus minus square root of 2 squared minus 4 times 35. This is times times minus 1 over 2a, so 70. So let me just move it here. So it's minus 2 plus minus. If you do the rough uh, computation, it's going to be root 144 over 70. Now, root 144 is a perfect square of 12 minus 2 plus minus 12 over 70. So now we've got two answers. The first one is minus 2 plus 12 over 70. The second one is minus 2 minus 12 over 70. So the, for the first one, it's 10 over 70, which is 1 over 7. The reason why I'm writing like this messy is because that's how exactly you're going to write on the final test as well. So be prepared to organize your work under stress. So you got two answers. You got 1 over 7, and you got negative 1 fifth. 
All right, so now let me let me remove all of these guys, all of this, all of these writings. So I'm not going to remove 9x to the fourth because I, I need this. But I will keep those two answers that I got. And now most people don't understand what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to do I'll get, I'm going to try to do it slowly. So please watch out. Make sure you follow the same logic that I'm about to present. So let me select a different color. Let's assume this maroon or whatever. So I have 9x to the fourth. And I got 35x squared plus 2x minus 1. So when I'm factoring, I have to put the A term. My A term is 35. So I have to multiply 35. X minus 1 over 7. X plus 1 fifth. I am negating these two guys. I'm negating those two answers. And I absolutely, positively need to multiply in 35. I can multiply 7 here and I can multiply 5 here. If I multiply 7 and 5, that's 35, so I can just pretty much remove the 35. So it's going to be 9x to the 4th. If I multiply 7 in the first bracket, it's going to be 7x minus 1. If I multiply 5 into the second bracket, I'm going to get 5x plus 1. This is my fully factored trinomial that looks so difficult. And now I have to look through the answers, and I see 7x minus 1c as the answer is one of the factors. So again, quadratic equations, as long as it has three different terms as a trinomial, chances are, chances are, it is a quadratic equation, 99% case. So you have to turn the given difficult looking trinomial into a quadratic equation. Next, let's factor x squared plus bx plus c. It's also a trinomial without the a term. We're going to look at problem two from final f 0, 22, a. Which of the following is not a factor of either polynomials? You can go ahead and not even use the quadratic equation, in fact. And maybe that's actually going to save you a lot of time. So for the first one, it's simply going to be equal to x minus 3 times x plus 1. If I were you, I would always double check by foiling. So it's x squared plus x. So x squared plus x minus 3x minus 3x minus 3. That's equal x squared minus 2x minus 3. See, I got the original, so I'm correct. Now, for the second one, do the same thing. So here we got x uh, plus 5 times x minus 1. Again, I would factor this just in case, so foil it. So it's x squared minus x plus 5x minus 5, which is equal to x squared plus 4x minus 5. Again, matches. So I got the following factors. I got x minus 3. I got x plus 1, I got x plus 5, I have x minus 1, and I need to eliminate the one which is not a factor. So x plus 5 out, x minus 3 out, x minus 1 out, and x plus 1 is out. So my only one which is left is x minus 5d. Boom. Topic 4, greatest common factor. Super popular topic, really popular topic. Watch out. Problem 3, uh, final F022A. So here, find the greatest common factor and it gives you some weird stuff. Weird stuff. Complete, completely weird equation. What you need to do in this expression is do not lose your head. Identify and isolate terms. So if I have 18 x to the 8 and y squared, I have three separate terms in here. I have a constant, which is 18. I got my x term, and I got my y term. Let's do the same thing down there. So 48 x cubed y to the fifth. Do not do gestalt. Gestalt meaning you look at the problem and try to figure this out. Split this into steps. Split this, break this completely into simple, simple steps. So here we got for the x's, the lowest term is x cubed. For the y's, the lowest term is y squared. For the constant, I don't know yet. So I'm I'm already aware that this is a question mark, x cubed, y squared. So which one is x cubed, which one is y squared? D. Chances are it is D. But let's just double check. So you got 18 and you got 48. Factor this out completely. So this is 2 times 9 and 9 is 3 and 3. So 2 times 3 times 3. 48 is 2 times 24. Always divide by the easiest one. Then 24 is also even, so 2 times 2 times 12. 12 is also even, 
So 2 times 2 times 2 times 6. 6 is also even. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, right? So they have 2 in common and they have 3 in common. So they have 6. 2 times 3 is 6. 6. 6x cubed y squared. That's how you know the answers. Break this into steps. It's going to be super simple if you do that. Topic 5, line equations. Line equations is also a popular topic. Uh, a very popular topic. I would say anywhere from 10 to 25%. Uh, percent of problems uh, on the final are from the line equations. So we're going to look at problem uh, 19 from uh, the final F019A. So here, find the equation of the straight line which passes through the point 57 and has a slope of negative 4. You must know this popular formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Let's just simply plug it in. So y minus 7 equals minus 4 times x minus 5. Now you must uh, distributed y minus 7 equals minus 4x plus 20 and then uh, let's move this negative 7 to the other side so y is equal to minus 4x plus 27 I would always I would always conclude my answer in a format of y is equal to mx plus b just in case now look at the answers multiple choices are you see like x and y's x and y's on one side right so now move the 4x to the other side so you got y plus 4x equals 27. That's my final answer for this specific problem. Clearly matches B. All right. So again, for every problem on the line equations, I would still convert that into y is equal to mx plus b first, and then look at the multiple choices to figure out which one will match. Will match that. A slope. Topic six is just the slope. We're going to look at problem 18, final uh, F019A. It's very similar to the previous topic. This one, this problem is actually pretty simple. Find the slope of the straight line. They try to confuse you. They're trying to make you do extra work. Look at this. This is the slope 4. Because y equals mx plus b in this specific format, m is the slope. So we already see that 4 is a slope. Do not make a mistake that it's negative 3. Lots of you will say it's negative 3 goes first. They're trying to trick you. Rewrite it. y is equal to 4x minus 3. 4. The answer is B. Next. Next topic. Adding rational expressions. Problem 14 from final F019A. Sounds very simple, but you having this, you know, this stupid, <laughs> stupid uh, uh, fractions, uh, the addition of two fractions. So how to attack it? 7 over 20u to the 7 plus 8, 45u to the 4. What I would do, I would look at the denominators first. Let me change the color. It's going to be a little bit messy here, but we used to this. So we got 20, we got 20 u to the 7, and we got 45 u to the 4th. We have to find the lowest common denominator. So we must multiply the first one, like pretty much here. Again, we see that the largest term is u to the 7. So our common denominator is going to be u to the 7. Then 20 and 45. How to do this? Factor this out. So 20 is equal to 4 times 5, which is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 5. And the 45 guy is 9 times 5, which is 3 times 3 times 5. You see how they have 5 in common? So it's going to be 5 in common, and then 2s and 2s, and then 3s and 3s. You see... Notice how I did not add 5 twice because it is common. Whatever is common, I put it once. Whatever is not common, I put the whole thing. So this is my common denominator. Now, let me erase this a little bit. Give me just a second, just to make sure it's not super messy. And we're going to continue. But look, keep looking at the bottom. And look at, like, I, what I would do, I would start immediately multiplying just to know what my final denominator will be, chances are. So... It's, again, here, so it's my denominator. Oh, oops. My denominator is u to the 7. 5 times 2 times 2 is 20 times 3 times 3, which is 9. So that's the same thing as 180 u to the 7. So let's look at the answers. So it's definitely not C. It's definitely not D. It's definitely not A. It still could be B if it's, multi if it's simplified somehow. But chances are it's E. Chances are. But anyways... We got 180 u to the 7 as our common denominator. Let me just erase, like I just made my work a little bit messy here. 
Now let's figure out how do I need to multiply, what do I need to multiply the first fraction by and the second fraction by. So my first fraction, 7 over 20u to the 7, I need to multiply it by 9 over 9. It will turn into 63 over 180u to the 7. So from the first fraction, I just put 63. Now the second fraction, 8 over 45u to the 4th, is a little bit more challenging. First of all, I need to multiply by u to the 3rd power to get to the 7th. I also need to multiply it by 4. 45 by 4 will get me 180. So I multiply on both sides. So it's going to be 32u cubed over the denominator, right? So plus 32u cubed. And bingo, magically, magically, it's matching the answer E. So in this situation, you're looking for the uh, the lowest common denominator, and then you multiply in each fraction to get to that lowest common denominator, then you combine in those two fractions. All right, almost done. Topic eight, systems of linear equations specifically solving by substitution. That stuff could be seriously, seriously messy. You have to show your work. You have to make sure you do it specifically by substitution. Substitution means you need to express one term in terms of the other. So look at both of these, uh, both of these uh, equations. I would immediately substitute for y because y is singular. You're looking for the singular one. So if 6x plus y equals negative 32, then y is equal to negative 6x minus 32. I just solved for y, and I need to keep that equation. And I will use that equation at the very end. Now I need to plug that equation for the first, for the first equation. So I have 9x minus 4, and instead of y, I'm plugging negative 6x minus 32 equals minus 70. So here I have 9x plus 24x plus 128 is equal to negative 70. So here I have 33x equals negative 198. And if I divide it, x is equal to negative 6. Now, some of your professors will tell you, well, plug it back into the original. Stupid. Stupid advice. Just go back and plug it in here. y equals negative 6 times negative 6 minus 32. That's equal 36 minus 32 equals 4. So my pair of answers is negative 6 comma 4. That's my final answer. Right? No multiple choices. So I'll just write it out like that. All right. Now, similarly messy topic, systems of linear equations, but solving by addition. Again, you must show your work. We're going to look at problem 25 from final 039A. So here, do all the work, etc. Addition method. Seven points, lots of points. All right. So what I would do, if I add, I see that negative 7y and 9y would cancel each other. So I would try to get the y's equal. So 2x, let me rewrite it, 2x plus 9y is equal to negative 37. And then 5x minus 7y is equal to 55. So if I multiply the top by 7 and the bottom by 9, why would I do that? I need to bring uh, y's to the same exact constant. So here it will get me to 14x plus 63y is equal to negative 7 times 37 is going to be equal to negative 259. You just have to pretty much do this on the side. Then 9 times uh, 5x is 45x minus 63y equals 5, uh, uh, sorry, 55 times 9 is going to be equal to 495. Again, you just need to do this calculation on the side. Add them up. You're going to be having 59x equal, if you add those two guys together, 236, which leads x to, to be equal to 4. As opposed to the previous one, here, unfortunately, you have to plug it back into the original. So for the substitution, you don't, but for the addition, you do in most cases. So I will plug it into the second one. So I'll do 5 times 4 is 20 minus 7y equals 55. I would move 7y here and 55 here. So it's negative 35 equals 7y. And therefore, y is equal to negative 5. So the pair of 4 comma negative 5 is my answer. So look for always look for the pluses and the minuses, the ones that could cancel each other potentially. And last topic, but not least, simplifying the complex fractions, problem 12 from the final f 19 a So here, again, do not look at gestalt. Gestalt will kill you. Gestalt is like you look at the whole expression and panic. Do not. Look at individual one. 5t plus 15. What can you factor out? 
you can factor out 5, you'll be left with t plus 3. On the bottom, 3t plus 15, what can you factor out? You can factor out 3, that's going to be t plus 5. Now, if you multiply this out here, you can factor out 15, 15 t plus 5. And then t plus 75, there is nothing you can factor out, just leave it as is. Now look at this, t plus 5 is out, 3 you can also cancel. So now you have 5 times 5 times t plus 3, keep in mind it's multiplication between, over t plus 75, which is 25, t plus 3, over t plus 75. Alright, and the answer is B, matches it perfectly. All right, so we just covered 10 topics. Uh, obviously, there are a lot more topics than this. Uh, but uh, watch this video, even if you have 24 hours, um, if you only have 24 hours right before the test. Okay? So thank you very much for watching. We covered the top 10 most common topics that appear on Baruch CSTM0120 finals. Again, everybody procrastinates. It's absolutely normal. That's why we prepared a special last minute cram course that will prepare you for your CSTM 0120 final within a super short period of time. You can access our last minute cram course by clicking the link in the video description below. Also, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and like our video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.